Good afternoon, we are the Global Bike Team. My name is John Boulchera. I'm Jimena. I'm Roxana Riani. Our faculty advisor is Dr. Benjamin Basil, and we'd like to give a special thanks to our fondly founder, um, Mr. Duriel Taylor. He's the founder of the Global Bike Company. At this point, I'm sure you're wondering, what is Global? Global is a is a, is an acronym for Glowing While Mobile. Our project goal is to make a self-powered bicycle that illuminates with the goal of increasing rider safety through visibility, especially at night time. The design objectives are to create a lightweight frame, making it portable, self-generated illumination frame, um, low purchase for the customer so that we can market it to a wide range of um, people, and safe and suitable for a use in a wide range of weather conditions. I would now pass on to Roxana, who would explain the prototype. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Um, okay, so like you said, we're basically designing a bike, and we're going to be using uh, electroluminescent paint to illuminate the frame. So we had explored a lot of different ideas, and the one that we thought was most suitable for our application was electroluminescent paint. Um, in order to power this electroluminescent paint, which needs a current, we're going to be using generators in the front and the rear uh, hubs of the bicycle. Uh, we we're also considering developing a non-permanent form of electroluminescence on the bike, um, instead of just the permanent form of paint, but something that you kind of can wrap the bike around that's almost like a fabric um, that can easily be removed if you don't want it, or if you just want to add it to a bike that you already have instead of investing in a whole other bike. Um, possible other auxiliary components that we are uh, considering are turning signals, brake lights, and charging port for portable electronics like uh, an MP3 or your iPhone or your phone. Um, so again, this is just a schematic of kind of what I described before, that we're going to be implementing turning signals. And these turning signals will probably be implemented right here in the seat bars, the seat tubes, I'm sorry. Um, and then they'll be powered by a switch that's going to be integrated on the handlebars. We're going to be having, we're going to try to design a rear hub wheel um, generator system. So they don't exist. They only have ones for the front. Um, so we're going to try to see if it's worth it um, and if, if we can generate it and if it's worth um, the extra weight because we might not even need that extra power. Um, so again, this is where our hub generator will be right now. And this is where the connection between the electroluminescent paint and the hub generator will be. And we'll give an example in the next slide. So a little bit about the science behind electroluminescence. Our electroluminescent paint from Luminor is going to have a phosphorescent layer that's activated by an alternating current. So this diagram on the left shows a subatomic diagram of what happens in the electroluminescent paint. So when an alternating current is applied to this phosphorescent atom, an electron is excited to a higher energy state, and when it transitions back to the ground state, it emits a photon. A huge benefit of using this EL paint is a low wattage requirement, but also it's cool to the touch. So we don't need to implement any heat sinking capabilities into our design, and it's safer for the cyclist. And the figure on the right of the screen is an actual sample of the Lumilor electroluminescent paint that we purchased from Dark Sky Scientific. We have a live sample here, and Jimena's going to demonstrate. So uh, as you can see, uh, it's pretty bright. Um, it's actually still even pretty bright when you don't have the lights off. And right now, it's programmed that you can have two um, to uh, different colors. settings, yes. Well, you can have different colors. However, the color is um, the brightness is uh, significantly affected by the color that you choose. For example, a green will have an, a luminance of about 80 candelas per cubic meters um, versus white, which will only have 40. So we are going to be um, uh, aware of that when we design what kind of colors we want to use and whether the whole frame will be one color, et cetera, et cetera. They're a very flexible company that we'll be working with in terms of um, how they apply the paint. So Luminar Labs has developed like a spray-on system of applying There's no light but the paint, paint, just so you can see inside. And it's just directly connected with this, which up supplies the voltage. It's really neat. Um, <laughs> so this is an example of the hub generator that we're going to use in the front wheel. And this is the specific model that we've chosen. It's the Sun Deluxe Dynamo Hub. We chose it because it's about half the weight with the same wattage and, and efficiency. So this diagram on the bottom just shows that the newer model that we're using is much lighter in weight. And you can move on to the next grade. This is our project timeline spanning from August of 2013 to the end of next semester. 
and this is our estimated prototype cost analysis. We purchased most of these components, so we expect the total prototype cost to be at a minimum of $4,000. That's the lower limit. And that concludes our presentation. Any questions? Could you go back to the slide with the schedule? Let me see when your prototype. Okay. So not until March before you'll have a real bicycle then? No, we already have a real bicycle. Oh, uh, so we'll where probably, is it? Uh, well, probably, it's, it's not it's not with the paint, so we didn't think it was worth bringing it. It's just okay. a bicycle. It's upstairs in the Um So we're going to be sandblasting it to, or we're probably actually going to use, um, uh, I forgot what it was, but it's like airplane paint removal. Uh, it's pretty strong, so uh, we're going to have to wear a lot of protection for that when we take it off. Um, and we're finalizing right now the logo that our investor wants before we send it over to Luminor Labs um, so that we can tell them what exactly we want painted on the bike. So ideally, hopefully we'll have that by the end of this year so we can send it out so we'll have it already back and we can start playing around with the, how we're going to connect everything and all the other auxiliary components that we'd like to add. And while our bike is at Luminor, Luminor Labs, we're going to be testing and integrating our other components in parallel. So when it comes back, we'll combine everything and integrate Are the costs for that lab work included in that estimate $4,000? Yes. That's actually the most costly part of our prototype, is actually having it painted. It's about $10 to $15 per square inch. Where's so that line item? Painting prototype by the Moore Okay. Labs. Two, two lines down, miscellaneous is spelled wrong. Oh, okay. Thank you for noticing that. I apologize. Um, I just added an extra thousand dollars in case we need to buy any unforeseen components or, you know, have any other services. That yeah, and this, and this is also the, the painting prototype. Uh, Fifteen hundred is kind of the, a little bit more of a higher estimate. We might have it lower because um, we don't know if we want the whole bike painted because maybe in order to decrease the cost, we can figure out what are the key uh, portions of the bike that are visible because there's no point in painting a part of the bike that's going to be covered by your legs or whatever. So um, that's just, the, again, the rough estimate. Um, so it might be lower, but it might not. What about the components for the generator and the brakes and all of that? Uh, I, I don't see that. That's already included when we purchased the bike. Oh, yeah, okay. these, the Sun Deluxe Hub Generator with wheel. It came with the wheel. Yeah, we purchased that separately already. We actually have it, but we don't want to bring too much stuff to our presentation. Um, and then we're going to investigate designing our own or finding a rear wheel hub that we can purchase. If we need the extra yeah. power. We need to see what kind so of... So you have some contingency built in there for that? You mean in the... In, the in, in your estimate for... Yeah, that's, that's why I put the miscellaneous prototype oh, okay, components. Got it. Yeah. Oh, you All right, <laughs> everyone looks at me. Yeah. All right, um, I just have a co quick comment at the beginning. I, um, I know most about the rest of the stuff, so I don't think you guys. Uh, but I would just say it might help in the beginning to specifically say the safety aspect. I know you guys did, but uh, riding a bike at nighttime is probably one of the most dangerous things almost anyone can do. Uh, Fact. Especially in Miami. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think one of the really nice things that you guys do is integrating it on the frame of a bike because everyone knows that triangle structure is a bicycle, right? The things that people have now, the flashing light on the front, who knows what that is behind you. But if you have this frame of a bicycle, everyone knows, okay, that person is riding a bike. So I think that part is really, really key to your whole we, design. We included it in our 25% report. I, uh -huh. we, I uh, for at least from the stats that I got from that were recorded by the UK. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there is a, yeah, is. a oh. royal charity or something that they, they keep track mm -hmm. of uh, safety statistics. And Actually, the statistics show that um, the more um, cyclists that you have riding, that is visibility is the least chance that you have an accident. So that's the basis of actually improving rider visibility for the project. Yeah, and what I was thinking about the UK one was um, that 57% of the reported accidents um, that were actually reported by the police, and actually it's estimated that only up to 10% uh, of accidents that occur are still reported. So there's a lot more than the 19,000 that are estimated that happen, but they say 57% of them occur because the driver did not see the cyclist. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that we're also uh, want to improve on so that you, if you can't see that, then 
probably drunk, and we can't help you with that. <laughs> you need to state that in the motivation. Yeah. yeah. That was uh, one thing that we recently came across when we, when we were expanding for our 25% report, so we didn't. Okay. The, uh, the other thing is I, I didn't see an explicit statement on the uh, global component. Okay. Our biggest concern of ours is it, it was difficult for us to I mean, I see global there all the time, but I don't see <laughs> well, that. Global is the name of that yeah. project. But no, I understand. Uh, I'm <laughs> yeah. involved with this project, too. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, um, we've just had difficulty, and it's really difficult for us to explain we barely made five minutes about, yeah. yeah, in five minutes about our project. So. If we did leave out a global component, it's not that it's not there, it's just that, you know, well, we're trying to... Well, let me suggest this. Have a slide on it and spend maybe 30 seconds talking sure. about the slide. Okay. Okay. But have a slide on it. No point. Thank you. We come. As long as you're using a commercial product, it's important that you highlight what would be your own added value. The new design, safety is a new way to come up with the prototype, to transmit power, because it not seems to be like uh, just marketing something, yeah. which is very useful, by the way, but you have to have, you have to show your own added value as a, as a mechanical engineering group. Okay? Well, what we stated was the integration <coughs> of the fact of using, connecting the uh, actual hub generator to the electrical medicine paint. So the electrical medicine paint has only been patented about a year ago. Um, and before we did it, we were trying to figure out how to make the, the frame itself using EL panels, but then we found this paint and it was much easier to do that. Um, so, so it's maybe the spend more time saying that. Yeah, more yeah, like yeah. It's the, yeah, it's slides, the point. Okay. yeah. We had only briefly mentioned because that's it's, what I'm saying. Yeah, maybe it's balance fair. your presentation, showing your own added value, and then obviously you show the yeah. compliment, which is the commercial product. Yeah, well, I mean, that's why it's just again, it's hard with the five minutes that it was a yes. self-powered component of it, and there's a lot of. But yeah, to answer your question, so the novelty of our design is coupling the energy generation with the lighting system. But yes, we we can do a better job of emphasizing that. And to ensure safety and security. With the ultimate goal of increasing the yeah, attention to cycling safety, yes. Yeah. Any other questions? Very good. Yeah. No? Yeah. No, I was going to say, uh, what do you consider is the most challenging part of your project overall? Is it? Probably cost. Um, and probably, again, figuring out if it's going to be enough power or not. Um, cause it's a it's a land version kind of reflected, so it's going to be uniform throughout. But we don't know um, in the sense of how much power do you need in order for it to is there like the, the startup voltage for it to actually light up and for it to maintain it as well. And obviously, it's figuring out the some sort of battery or capacitance system that if you're not writing it if you're writing in the daytime, you, you don't care about it lighting up. So you, how can we save that energy so that when you write it at night, you can have it light up and it's not a problem. So it's kind of figuring out all those components so that it's, again, it's something that it, it's useful um, no matter when you're writing it. Um, and it's, it's connecting all of that because these are two completely different systems that were not meant to be together. The, the hub actually is designed to be connected to specific LED sets. So you kind of buy the hub and you kind of buy the LED sets that go with it. So we're not using those LED sets. So figuring out a way of how this connection works with our bike and how to make it safe as well for if it's raining outside suddenly when you're riding and things like that, that's probably our biggest challenge. The other issue you just prompted me on is that uh, <clears throat> so far you've talked about lightweight. Mm -hmm. If you start harnessing the energy from riding during the daytime so you'll have it ready for the nighttime operation, um, what kind of components are you going to be using to harness that energy that would not add significantly to the weight? Well, that would be the, the hub generator. No, it's the no, no, no. So, um, the generator is generating so, energy. Oh, that's what I'm saying. So so we, have it, we have it currently, yeah. We're yeah. going to still look at it and think about the system. Okay. And you're going to be looking at uh, keeping weight. The weight component yeah, or weight element. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's I mean, all, that's, I'm sorry. That's, but that was one of the appealing features of using the electroluminescent paint is it doesn't significantly add to the weight of our bike. And we're using a very lightweight road bike. So we're going to have some extra weight ranges to play with that we can add additional components like capacitors or perhaps a battery we can charge to use to light up the system at night or auxiliary components. So. You know, I know that when we implement everything or integrate everything, problems can arise, but I don't see that being a problem because we already have a lightweight system that I think we can add on to it without making it too heavy. 
we also give ourselves a little bit of, uh, I guess what you would call wiggle room with the generator because compared to generators that are commonly used here in uh, most bikes, like in Deco bike, they use the Shimano ones. And in uh, one of the slides that we showed, the Shimano one versus two of the generators, the Sun Deluxe that we're using, um, it's still significantly heavier. So we did that on purpose. It is more expensive than the Shimano one, probably about a hundred to two hundred dollars more expensive. But it, it again adds to the fact that we don't know. We're not. We have haven't been able to anticipate how much weight we're going to be adding because of whatever battery charging system that we have. So it won't be that much. I yeah. mean, if you look at the size of that sample right there, that's maybe one fifth of the actual area of the bike. It has two nine volt batteries. Even if you did. Which you wouldn't have to do, but even if you did 10 9 volt batteries, that's not really going to change. I'm pretty sure yeah. um, in order for it just to actually work, you only need about um, 0 0.7 milliamps per square inch. And we're producing about, uh, I mean, not taking into account the efficiency, obviously, but 3 watts for the generator. Okay, thank you very much.